say. So it can only have one. For each epsilon greater than zero, um, uh, there exists a delta greater than zero such that um, x in v with zero less than norm of x minus a less than delta implies what? Maybe I should write it up here. It implies what? F of x minus v is less than f or the norm of f of x minus v is less than f. Right. Now, if you had come to this one here, you should recognize this definition. It's almost verbatim what we study for limits in calculus one. Now, to be more specific, though, this is, I mean, it's really, I mean, as much as it's the same, it's very different, right? Because this is the norm in the vector space V. This, on the other hand, is the norm in W, right? In calculus one, we just have absolute value for both places because absolute value gives us our, our metric on the reals. But there you go, that's the definition of limit. Right? And we can study, you know, what, what are the theorems we have for limits? Right? So let me tell you a few of those theorems. Actually, at this point, I will um, project a little bit. I posted the notes from 2013. They're not quite representative for what we're doing. I mean, they're useful to you, I think, but they're not quite what we're doing. Um, there's some distractions in there. There's a lot more about um, sort of, uh, there's a lot more about topology on our end, some other things. Like, there's a lot of, I would say, fluff in the early chapters. And I'm, I'm trying to cut a more clear path to what I think is interesting in this course. So that's, from my perspective, there's like some noise in the 2013 notes, but before too long, it's certainly by the time we're to about chapter four, they're just almost a direct representation of what I intend to cover. All right, so. And um, the, summer was, the summer was not long enough. I, uh, I am, I am just stupidly behind right now. I'm hoping, though, um, that uh, I will have a new set of notes soon um, so that it's more directly representative of what I did do with you today. I will definitely post something um, by tomorrow, at least on the linear algebra summary that I told you about. And I hope to, by tomorrow, have at least a good part of the first homework set. So I'll try to do it weekly so you have just like a little bit to work on that so we to get to. I don't I need to have it every two weeks because then all of a sudden it'll snowball into something truly horrible. And um, anyway, I, I, my, my goal is not to make this course the only thing you do this semester. Don't, don't be scared. I'm, uh, not, not my intention here. And I will work with you guys about, you know, not conflicting your other classes in terms of tests. You just got to let me know ahead of time as much as possible. Um, <clears throat> For example, anybody, well, what, what's going on this semester in terms of courses? September 16th is a pretty hot day for me. I think I have three on that day. Right. I, was, I thought you were going to get married or something. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you have three on September 16th? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. If, if they don't straighten their syllabus, at least. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Oh, the text. That's the other thing. You could um, 
read, it wouldn't be bad to read Edwards. I mean, Edwards is, is pretty good here. Um, so. this, this page, essentially. Oh, this? This, this page is coming from? Oh, I have not posted this yet. Okay. But I will. This is what I was talking about I'm posting tomorrow. My perfectionist tendencies are, it's, it's fine. They used to be all different. Yeah. Oh, okay, so I'll make sure I talk about this today. So next time, I will start by proving some properties of, of the limit. And from that, I'll actually I'm try to give you some interesting examples. Um, no, I won't forget that. We will start doing examples when it's interesting, which is differentiability. Okay, so next time, start, we will hopefully, I will, I will, I will show you the properties of the limit on a normal linear space. And, and then we will hopefully get to the definition of what does it mean for a function from a normal linear space to a normal linear space to be differentiable. So we can talk about like, taking a derivative with respect to a matrix or something, which is kind of out there, right? Did you know how to differentiate with respect to a matrix right now? Did Dr. Wayne cover that in Calc 3? <laughs> no, I mean, if I cover that in Calc 3, I should be fired. I mean, pretty much. I mean, it's, it would be ridiculous. So, um, okay. So that's, that's what's ahead. For the rest of today, I just want to talk about just how much freedom we have in choosing a norm. All right? So again, the definition is just has to satisfy these four things. So, for um, for Rn, there are, you know, here are some standard examples of, 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 of norms on Rn. The one I already told you about is the standard Euclidean norm. That's just the square root of the dot product with itself, right? So that's the standard Euclidean norm. The taxicab norm, what you do is you take the sum of the absolute values. It's also called the one norm. You take the sum of the absolute values of the components. So you see why it's called the taxicab norm? Yeah, I mean, imagine yourself in a city with well laid out streets. I know it doesn't really make sense in Lynchburg, but if you could imagine yourself in a very flat place that has streets that go north, south, and east, west, and getting from point A to point B, there's no diagonal roads, right? So the distance, however you do it, has to be like, you know, this way, and that way, and this way. So when you add those distances up, it's like just the absolute value of that direction and then that direction, whatever it might be. That's so the taxi cab norm. <laughs> the soup norm. No soup. Um, sorry, sub. Sub. Um, the sub norm, or the infinite infinity norm, it is defined to be the maximum of the components of Vj. So if you give me a vector in R5 that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the length of that vector is 5. It turns out that defines a norm. Satisfies those set of axioms. All right. Now, something you'll hear philosophers say is that why well, that's preposterous. You can't square the circle. It's something they love to say. All right. I want to show you now. They are just very short-sighted in their thinking. They are not nearly abstract enough in their thinking. Because mathematicians have been imagining squaring the circle for quite some time. It's as simple as what I show you. So what is a circle? A circle should be what? It should be this. Here's one way you can define it, at least. Right? Set of points of fixed distance from some central point. Let's say the origin. So we can talk about a circle with respect to the origin in a linear space. Right? Set of points equidistant from the origin. In other words, a set of points where the norm of all those points is equal. To something. We talked about the unit circle, right? So we can talk, we can then think about what's the unit circle in the Euclidean norm, what's the unit circle in the taxicab norm, what's the Euclidean circle in the sub norm? Not the Euclidean circle, what's the circle in the sub norm, right? And in fact, what you get is the following. Of course, P equals 2, that's the circle. By the way, the P norm is the, the P root of the sums of the P powers of the absolute values of the coordinates. This is the, the P norm. Taxicabs P equals 1, Euclidean's P equals 2. You could do 
3 and blah, blah, whatever. If you take p going to infinity, you end up, you get to the sub norm. As you get p goes to infinity, this goes out more and more and more until eventually it, it becomes a square in the limit. So, yes, I can imagine squaring the circle. I just have to change my notion of what distance is. Just like that. There it is. Squared the circle. I've tried to talk to philosophers about this over the years. I don't recommend that conversation. They're not less really that open-minded about these sorts of things. What's that? Can you go less than one? Go less than one. You know, I don't know. Um, remember I mentioned earlier that there are some norms that you can't turn into an inner product space? Taxicab is actually an example of that. So there's something perverse about the taxicab norm in the sense that you can't, it can't be induced from an inner product. Um, so, actually my whole thesis was, I, I worked on super numbers with the, essentially the taxicab norm. It's, um, it does make certain things easier. But here's a more basic point. I claim that the limits, now I know it's not immediately obvious, but this actually is a sneaky way of saying that the inverse image of an open set is open. Um, well, excuse me, uh, if I, it, what would it mean for f to be continuous at A in the thing I covered up? What's the definition of a function being continu continuous in a normal case? The same as calculus 1, the limit of the function at the limit point is equal to the value of the function at the limit point. So I would have to have an addition, I would have to have that f of a is equal to b. In my definition, I just covered up, right? Now, it's probably not immediately obvious to you guys, but it is in fact true that this is equivalent to saying that the inverse image of an open set is open for f. So if you take, if you take an open set around b, then if you look at the inverse image of that, that gives you an open set around a. Maybe I'll try to give you a homework problem that helps you, to, that work guides you through that. Um, it would probably be useful. So what I'm trying to tell you is the definition of what an open set is basically defines what our concept of limit is. Right? So if you think about a set being open, you know, if you, if you can fit a circle around a point, you can just as well fit a diamond around the point. You can just as well fit a, a square around the point, which is inside the set. So the particular shape of the basic open balls doesn't matter. In finite dimensions, it doesn't matter. In finite dimensions, all of the different choices of norm that you can make, they all generate the same topology. They all generate the same limit. When you get to infinite dimensions, other stuff happens. But anyway, so I know that's a lot for today. Um, please don't give up on the course. <laughs> Think about it that way. So, yes. How much of this wasn't linear? That's a yeah. <laughs> that's a question you should ask.